Welcome everyone to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition it's Akari Warriors 2 Victory Road, brought to us by SNK. Akari Warriors 2, based off the arcade game of the same name, continues the story of the original Akari Warriors. You end up having to deal with an alien invasion shortly after dealing with the general that we fought at the end of Akari Warriors 1. As we begin the game, you move up slowly. There's power-ups in this version with several different weapon types that you're able to have. You also have a throwable type, the grenade that you can use as well, that also has other weapon that you can get and upgrade. Also added to this version is currency that you can pick up in the form of the hearts that you pick up on the ground once enemies are defeated. You can then spend the currency at the various shops in order to buy upgrades and other items, which is a cool addition for sure. The gameplay for the most part is similar to the original. There's these added bonus doors that you can go into for bonus areas that I'll be skipping. You can easily just pause the game, go into the menu, and open it back up and they'll be gone. Up here, destroy the wall and then go on through. A lot of the strategy in this game, like in the original Kari Warriors, is to kind of keep on moving through. Thankfully, this game is easier than the original. You have your health bar at the top corner, so that's very useful. It still can get drained rather fast, and this is by no means an easy title, but I do think it's more accessible than the original. Here I'm going to head inside of the shop and show you what this one is about. You can see that there's a few items that we'll be able to buy using the money that we've picked up so far. The best items are the health potion as well as like the uh, eagle shield thing that gives you the ability to transform into the mech. And when you're in the mech form, you can blast through enemies a lot quicker and you move a lot faster as well. A lot of the environment is destructible, so you can do that in order to find various upgrades and power-ups. I do that right here before I face off with the first boss. Thankfully, a lot of the bosses have a very easy trick to them. You can just stay far enough away from their reach and just keep on attacking them. Don't move at all, just kind of stay with out of their reach but within grenade shot distance and just wait for the bosses to kind of keep moving around in a circle to come to you. Not every boss can be beaten this way, but there are several in the game that we will be defeating this way. The only thing with the strategy is it does end up taking extra time, of course, but there's no time limit in the game, thankfully. Once the boss is taken care of, continue up to the top. You'll notice a key here, pick up the key, and you can open up the wall here and go inside to continue on to the next area. Connecting the areas are these hallways, and there's various enemies that you'll have to deal with throughout the game in these little hallways. They're like little mini areas that you have to deal with. As we come out, be careful of the statues. They will fire at you, and they can destroy you in just a single hit, if possible. So just be careful of them. I'm going to destroy both of them just to grab the upgrades. As we begin north, we'll eventually start running into these enemies. I'm going to hit them with a grenade, stopping every couple of steps, and that way I can fire the grenade as they kind of come towards me. I'm going to grab this item and avoid the bonus room. There's also green ones that you'll see that give you boss fights that you have to do. And extra boss fights are just something that you don't necessarily want in a game where it's already hard enough to stay alive. Keep working your way up, be sure to pick up the health potion.
Here I'm going to go ahead and change up my weapon. I like the boomerang weapon. It's short range, but it works pretty efficiently. Going to check out the shop real quick, just to see if there's anything useful. Usually though, it's just going to be the same stuff we already have, so... Now I'm finally going to actually use my item and equip the medicine. I should have just gone ahead and done it before, but I was like, you know what, let me just keep going for a second. I didn't notice how low my health was until I was about to enter into the uh, shop for the second time. When you use the A button, you'll end up using your weapons. I'm going to use the select button in order to bring up my menu again and then skip on out so that way I can get past the bonus room. Continue up here until we make it to the next boss encounter. This boss is similar to the last one that we just dealt with. We're going to stay at a distance and then just keep firing our grenades at him as he's moving back and forth in a nice, easy pattern. It takes time just like before, but it's a very easy and simple way to deal with this boss. Movement in the game can be a little bit weird because they mimicked the controls from the arcade which allowed you to go in all eight directions easily. Whereas this one, it's not as easy to do that with the D-pad, but they did their best I guess. You kinda gotta get used to centering your character and getting them to face front when needed. Open up the area and head on inside to the next one of these little red tunnels, leading us to the next level. Thankfully some nice diagonal shots are enough to take out all the enemies along the wall. This is where things start to get a lot more tough for sure. Just kind of keep moving up, destroy the wall when needed in order to kind of go on through. I'm going to use my mech in just a moment or two in order to fly through some of this area to help us out. You can also gather items while doing it as well. Skip the next one of those extra rooms. Keep working my way up. Don't need this shop at the moment. The mech suit or mech armor is actually really useful. You can get over a large amount of distance, as you can see, before we finally end up landing. Destroy open the wall as needed as you work your way through. After that area, it's time for the next boss encounter. This boss is going to be the same strategy as the last couple of bosses. We're just going to wait for them to kind of come towards us and throw grenades at them. Unfortunately though, with this boss, they do fire projectiles, so you have to move around yourself a little bit. But a lot of the same strategy can remain as far as getting out of their reach so that you don't end up getting hit and firing the grenades up at it.
here we get a bunch of power-ups as we reach out of the door here and go on to the next area. Be careful of the statues, like always. I'm gonna pull out the uh, sword here. You can see the way that ends up working goes around you in a circle. It kind of protects you a little bit. Doesn't stop projectiles or anything like that from like getting to you, but if you're about to run into an enemy, it'll help you for sure. Gonna go into the menu once again, just to bypass another one of the rooms. Also gonna go ahead and switch up my gun back to uh, something a little bit more useful. I did want to show the sword for a little bit. You also get the sword for the final fight, but it's completely useless. Getting low on health, so I'm gonna go into the menu and go to my potion. Just keep moving, kind of in the center, going back and forth, left and right with diagonal shots, and you should be able to take out most enemies. Thankfully, right after we use the one potion, we end up getting another one that's just laying here. And that leads us up into the next boss encounter. Now this boss is a little bit different as it slowly moves and snakes around. We're going to still use our grenades and throw at the head of it, but you kind of got to move around a little bit more and aim your shots a little differently in order to actually land the blows as you're dodging the projectile that it consistently keeps firing out. Sometimes you can get the boss kind of in a circle where it'll just kind of keep going into itself, in which case you can keep hitting it multiple times, but you run the risk of being hit yourself. Watch out for both enemies on the left and right side here. It can be difficult to get through this little hallway without getting hit. Once again, getting low on health, so I'm going to switch up and pick out the potion. This is the final level of the game. We start outside of like the castle and we're going to work our way towards it. We're going to use our armored mech suit thing in a little while to help us. Inside this wall you can thankfully get one of those. Here is where we're going to switch over and take the mech or armored suit out. And now I'm going to change into it and go up the far right side. Just keep going up the right side. You should be able to dodge most of the projectiles that are being fired at you and you're going to avoid almost all the enemies as well. It's time for the next boss fight before the final fight. This one's just another one of those matches that we've been doing before where we're going to stay at a distance and keep attacking the boss. It takes a while to deal with it this way, but it's a nice, safe, easy way to guarantee a victory against this particular boss and against all those other ones earlier. Once the boss is taken care of, move up a little bit more, you get a cutscene, and then it's time for the final fight.
Like I said, the sword is pretty much useless. What we're gonna do is do these kind of like circle attacks where you go out of the way of his direct projectile, but then turn around and fire a grenade as you're doing the turn. It's a little bit difficult and takes a while to kind of get used to. Also, dodging his attacks, you want to stay relatively close to the center of him to force him to attack straight, so that if you're slightly to the left or right of him, you'll dodge his attack and he just ends up missing you. It's not an easy fight. Keep your distance as much as possible. As soon as he starts getting close, immediately run to the other side if you can. Thankfully, the walls usually are a good spot to kind of get back down to the bottom part of the screen. And then you can kind of keep doing the same process that you've been doing. Thankfully, the reach of his weapons don't quite go the entire screen so that you're able to kind of hide out. What's funny is you can actually glitch and skip this fight altogether. When you first entered into the area, if you're going against the right side, you can actually move up quick enough and skip the whole boss and go right to the actual ending. Once you deliver the final hit, though, we get the brief ending, or really just the credits, to Akari Warriors 2. So there you have it, Akari Warriors 2 Victory Road for the NES. Better than the original for sure, but still not an amazing game. It's better co-op for sure. The final boss fight alone in this game took me weeks to finally be able to actually best without dying. It's an extremely challenging fight. With that though, it's going to wrap up this episode of Play It Through. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.